Hi, everybody, and welcome to another edition of GLP's 10 out of 10. And today we have with us Thomas Kowalczyk, who's the Director of Lighting Design at Wynn Design and Development, the company who is responsible for all of the Wynn and Encore resorts around the world. And Tom heads up and is responsible for all areas of lighting design within every single resort. Uh, growing up on the east coast of America, Tom attended Temple University in Pennsylvania, where he got his first taste for lighting in both the theatre and the TV departments of the campus. After leaving Temple, Tom got a job with the design great David Hersey, who'd begun working on projects already in Las Vegas. It wasn't long before Tom found himself working as part of the team on those projects, which included the famous volcano at the Mirage and shows at Treasure Island. Something about Las Vegas was starting to stick. Tom then began working on the iconic Siegfried and Roy show. As Las Vegas continued to grow, Tom found himself transitioning more and more over to the architectural side of lighting with his current role, having responsibility for the lighting in every area of the Wynn and Encore resorts, as I mentioned, and that's globally as well. It's a job that certainly brings variety and new challenges, I'm sure, on a daily basis. Welcome, Tom Koralczyk. Thank you. Thank you very much. Great to uh, great to have you here. And and yeah, what a just a fascinating job you must have. It's a great job. Every day I come in, there's something new I do. I design a different space all the, every, every week. Like uh, in, one, in one day, I can design uh, a, a famous restaurant, and then by weeks end, I could be designing a public bathroom in the in the same <laughs> space. You know, <laughs> and in between that, I got a ballroom, and I have a uh, a, a casino cage to do, you know, so there's always designs going on in, in my world. Uh, all right, let's, let's try and uh, get to the the, the, the the 10 questions for you then, Tom. So okay. winding, winding all the way back to, to the beginning, uh, what was your, what was your first, uh, you know, I've written show, but I guess back then you were doing entertainment. So what was your first show as a designer? Well, after I got out of school, I became a technical director with the Summerstock place, just to, you know, mm -hmm. so we were doing shows there. Uh, Mr. Mister Roberts was my first real show, which was the worst show in the whole world. I don't know if you remember. I don't know if you know that show. It's a, I, I don't two know. guys on a boat. But then I went to work for uh, Donald Trump in Atlantic City, mm -hmm. and uh, I started doing some shows for him there. But while I was doing shows, I started doing architectural lighting, too. So I would work on things outside the theater. And uh, I'd work on his boat at the time. This was way before his president, just for the record. Right. <laughs> still in Atlantic City working. And then I finally came out and uh, worked uh, with, like you said at the beginning, with David Hersey on stuff. I yep. took him to see. I took him once to see Cats when I was together with them. Uh -huh. And this is when they were doing Cats as a stage production. I mean, as a stadium production. Okay. And he hated it. I mean, but just think about his his design went to a stadium. And I made them all stay because I never saw it before. So oh, right. they had to sit through it. And of course, I'm crying during, you know, memories. Right. <laughs> no, but um, it was uh, funny because he, uh, they all wanted to leave. And I'm like, right. no, you can't leave. Um, I guess I, when it came to design of a show, it wasn't until when I started working at the Sigford and Roy show that we started designing really theatrical lighting. I worked with, uh, I think who designed that show was Andrew Bridge. Right. Um, from Family Opera. And uh, boy, he made the greatest design package you've ever seen. But even when I was working for Siegfried and Roy, I was always working with the engineers and uh, the company called Alandia to do um, architectural lighting. Okay. So I always had my hand in the door. Yeah. So I just eventually learned more and more. And then I finally got the chance to work, start working for Mr. Wynn uh, for Wynn Resorts. And uh, the guy that hired me said, if you want to design lighting, this is the place to be. And uh, I've, I've never stopped. So I'm sure, obviously, with all, with all of these different experiences uh, from both sides of things, th there's there's probably been a few times where, you know, everything was all planned out. Everything looked to be going great. And then it just all went a little bit wrong. Have you got a, a you know, like what we're calling a spinal tap moment where it just uh, it just wasn't to scale or, or something happened that you can share with us? You know, I... I... I thought about this question long and hard and, you know, I, I like I said, the, 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 I worked for Siegfried and Roy for the longest time and uh, I met my wife there and uh, they, had, they had an elephant and this named Jilda, she was beautiful. 
Mm. And she would always defecate on stage. She, <laughs> and I tell you, but the, the elephant guy would make her stand up back and make her try to go to the bathroom. And he'd be like, go. Right. And of course, that's like me yelling at you to go to the bathroom, you know, right. and you're like, just look at me like, what are you kidding me? Like, you know, you just can't make an elephant do that. <laughs> and then of course, as soon as that elephant came inside, God, on, right on cue, bam. And I'm telling you, it's, it is like, uh, it's, they're, they're, it's, it's an amazing amount. Right. I would just say people are like fleeing from the, don't forget it, the stage was right there where you can like literally, if you wanted to, you could probably touch the elephant as she walked by. So <laughs> that elephant right. went, I, it was crazy. I mean, I it, swear to God. It's one show where you. So that would probably be my, my moments there. Right. But every night was, uh, was one of those final tap moments. I'll tell you. Right. We always had something crazy going on there. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like fun. Stay out of the first couple of rows with. Uh, Please do, yeah. <laughs> um, over the years, I'm sure you you've received different bits of advice. What what would you say is the best piece of advice you've ever received, either professionally or otherwise? Uh, you know, for lighting, since we're staying the lighting, mm -hmm. the advice I always give people is the secrets in the lamp the light lamp itself in plain words. And I'm talking architecturally now for everybody's, anybody's listening. I mean, you got different beam spreads, different color temperatures, different ways of uh, mitigating glare, uh, different ways of frosting a lamp, uh, but everything works on the light bulb itself. Nowadays, lights or light bulbs are going away and they're becoming now a thing called chip on boards. I don't know if you're familiar with this or they're hermetically sealed fixtures where there's no light bulb, but there'll always be light bulbs. Okay, so what I'm trying to get at is just know your light. You got to know what that light can do mm. and how it can make it work for your design. I guess almost like theater. You really need to know, you know, the horsepower of your theatrical lights, you know, what they, what you want to do and so on and so forth. So, yeah. Yeah. That's true. Um, it, it all starts around that engine and, and what it's capable of. It really does. Bringing out the best of it. Yeah. I, I, that's what I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Well, very good. Very good. Um, what would you say is your proudest achievement in your career so far? You know, we I just opened the Boston Hotel uh, right right before the pandemic, of course. <laughs> uh, but uh, the uh, when we when you open a hotel, and when I mean when I open up a hotel, I'm talking about like from outside, inside to you know uh, tower to the basement, mm. back of house areas. I'm in. I got. I'm involved with everything. Right. So. Uh, to open a hotel with a team, you know, uh, or, and the electricians involved and the electrical engineers that help, you know, everything to get you through and the contractors, mm. it's a great feeling. You know, it's, it, I guess it'd be like equivalent of you uh, opening night of a theatrical, of, of, of stage show on Broadway, you know, that you finally you opened. And uh, what a relief it is. Of course, then, of course, then there's all these things that have to get fixed after the words, which <laughs> you still work your ass off after. But, um, <laughs> It really is, that's, I'd have to say that's my greatest thing. You know, open up the Wynn Hotels, the ones in China, the ones uh, in Boston just recently. Great. And then so, and then obviously the, the next ones bring a new challenge as well. So, you know, another new achievement every time. It's just, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, bigger and better. Yeah. Great. Um, so with all of that, what do you, what do you normally do in your downtime? Well... I got a beautiful wife and two kids. We used to like to go out and uh, I like playing golf. Uh, I go home now at night and have a nice cigar. Uh -huh. If I can, I'll puff on a nice cigar. I love them. <laughs> uh, Mr. Wynn used to smoke cigars. He used to give me some of his cigars. They were fantastic. So, uh, yeah. but uh, just uh, relaxation. We, we like to watch TV together, you know, and uh, uh, just, um, you know, we're planning a trip possibly out of the, uh, soon coming up if providing everything goes good here with the COVID. But um, yeah, I live a pretty boring life. It sounds like after I work. <laughs> well, no, that's good. I mean, spending time with family. I mean, that's that's precious. That's important. That's a great way to spend any downtime. I think. Uh, I know. It's the only only question. I was like, hubba hubba hubba. I was like, what do I do? <laughs> uh, okay. So our next question is has of course had more of an entertainment uh, uh, bias to, to the reason behind we ask it, but, but I'm sure you've, you're going to have a, a great answer to it. And the question is, what's the best venue that you've ever worked in? You know, right now we have United States and China and in the United States, I have Las Vegas and Boston. I would say that uh, each place I go to is my favorite. 
but I do like, of course, being in Las Vegas because it is my home. And, uh, you know, I, I just know everybody here and we're a good team here in Vegas. Perfect. Perfect. And a fantastic venue. And if nobody, uh, anybody watching has not ever actually made it into the wind, then you need to. Next time you're in Las Vegas, maybe for LDI or something like that, just make sure you go and, and experience part of the hotel. It's absolutely, absolutely phenomenal. Uh, okay. So obviously, we're, as we mentioned, you know, we're, st we're still in the middle of, of the pandemic and, and in various different states of lockdown. Um, musically, uh, if, if, you know, if you could only have one, one artist or, or one album that you could, you could keep with you, uh, who would that be? Good question. You know, when I sit down and start designing, you know, sometimes I listen to Howard Stern and I, I can't design with Howard because it's too crazy. <laughs> so I got the serious ready here. So what I'll do is I'll put on the Grateful Dead channel. I'm serious. Okay. And uh, I'll listen to those guys. And uh, I'm a little bit of a deadhead. And uh, I'll listen to their music. And, it, you know, it, you just, it just makes the design juices come out. It really does. You should try it. <laughs> it really works. Okay. All right. Uh, so I would say that, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. Keep them around. Um, now, if you could wind the clock back and go and visit the teenage Tom and offer him one piece of advice, what would that be? You know, I don't regret anything I, I've done. Mm -hmm. uh, I, 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 you know, I've always found school to be fantastic. I always, always wanted to go to school. You know, I was, a lot of my friends didn't want to go to school and you know, whatever. I always wanted to go to school and I kept going to school and I, I, I pushed myself and uh, I wouldn't change a thing. I really wouldn't. I'm, I'm proud of, you know, how I got to where I'm at, at I, you know, and uh, worked hard. So, uh, yeah, that's uh, I would say I'm good with okay. that. Right. That's fantastic. That's, that's great to, to, to be able to to be in that position, to be able to say that. And, and yeah, that's just phenomenal. OK, so for the next question, if you were able to sit down for a cup of coffee with uh, or a cigar, with uh with anybody at all uh living or deceased who would who would that be oh boy you know i'd have to probably say my father he died right as right as he retired and he had a terrible disease called als which is that lou Gehrig's disease right and uh i wish it on nobody and uh i just just when he started to re retire he got he got sick and uh i really probably would say him um, right. I, I miss him and, uh, I would, uh, love to spend some time with him again. Uh, he had a tough journey at the end, mm. but that's who I would like to see again. Right. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. Phenomenal choice. Absolutely. Can't, can't be, uh, I can relate to that. Absolutely. Can't be, uh, yeah. can't be better than that. So, great. Great. Uh, okay. And so here we are almost, almost too quickly at the, uh, at the final question. Um, so when we're, when we're finished with the interview, your phone's going to ring and it's going to be team USA, the Olympic organization calling you up and, uh, and they're going to talk to you about competing. Now it could be for the summer games or for the winter games, but what's the sport that they're going to call you up for? What, uh, what have you always fancied having a go at? <laughs> I, I was going to say, um, running because I, I know I could run. I'm not going to trip. At least I don't think I'll trip, and I'll, I won't come in first place. But at least I'll finish. I think I'll finish right. without you know keeling over a heart attack. So I guess without embarrassing myself too much. So I would say running, right, running, just to be on the yeah. safe side. Okay, Tom, this has been this has been just absolutely absolutely fascinating uh, to hear about your, your your role, and and I think it, it hopefully for anybody who's who's listening will have a, a you know. A different, a different aspect when they next walk into a, a resort like the Wynn, but hopefully the Wynn, any of the, the ones that you mentioned around the world, that they will, you know, stop, pause, look around and really appreciate uh, everything that, that happens within your job and, and obviously all the hard work and, and your teams have, uh, have put into it to make it look uh, as good as it does. Um, thank you so much. Obviously, you're, you're busy with your, your, so all of these different projects going on around the world. Uh, we really appreciate you finding some time for us, Tom. It's been absolutely fascinating. So. Thank you very much. Um, stay safe, of course. And we, we look Thank forward you. to you yourself too. a big rebound, uh, you know, especially in Vegas as well for everybody who's out there. And yes. To get things yeah. back to normal again. So, Absolutely. Thanks again. I look forward to catching up with you in person next time I'm out there. Yeah, please do. Uh, I'd love to meet you in person. This was a fantastic interview and a good time. Yeah, fantastic. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Tom. Stay well and uh, yeah, see you soon.
Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.